One of the most common questions I get asked by nutrition coaches who are looking to level up their businesses. How do I go about hiring people to build out my coaching business and my team? I'm doing well, making money, and I wanna blow this up. So I know I need help, but I don't know where to start. In this video, I'm gonna show you five ways to leverage the help of others to grow your nutrition coaching business. Now, this video is intended for nutrition coaches that are making more than $5,000 per month and are looking to grow in scale to those 10,000 or even $20,000 months. But even if that isn't you, there's plenty of lessons to learn because to get to that place, you need help. And here's how to do it. Starting with number one, administrative support. For many coaches, they are a one coach show. They do everything, the content creation, the coaching, the responding to DMs and emails. They're doing it all, but there does come a time where you can't do it all. Even if that hurts my Superman complex to say. When I talk to you about this stuff, it's coming from a place of, I completely understand what it's like to be there. For the longest time, I thought I could do everything completely on my own, and that really limited my business. So I wanna pass along what I've learned through the process. One of the easiest ways to leverage help is hiring some administrative help. So you can outsource some of the essential, but less valuable tasks to someone else. Who can do them, and if anything, is better equipped to do them than you. Yes, that is the one thing you're gonna to need to start believing is that someone else can do a better job than you in your business, especially at some things. Here's a good exercise to start to realize what some of those things are. Now, I gotta be honest, I completely forgot where I came across this exercise. I think it was one of my first mentors passed it along to me. But I want you to think about all the things in your businesses. We have thousand dollar hour tasks, which are CEO tasks, they're money generating. We also have a hundred dollar an hour tasks, which give you a professional wage and have a lot to do with the fulfillment of your coaching services and we have $10 an hour tasks. These are the things like responding to client inquiries, posting social media content, all stuff that could be done by someone else. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to start organizing everything you do in your business in these three columns. Here's some examples of what some of these things are. So in this $1,000 hour column, we have things like delivering a webinar or going on a podcast. Any opportunity that you have where you could get new clients is going to be an $1,000 an hour task. And you should be doing these tasks and spending all of your energy on them because that's what's going to help you grow your business and going to be the best use of your energy and skills. You also need to be spending some time creating the vision for your business. Who are you best suited to serve? Where do you want to take things? These are all responsibilities and tasks that are extremely valuable and set the tone for your entire business and you need to be doing them. In the middle here, we have the actual coaching and fulfillment in our services. This is what many coaches enjoy doing and spend a lot of their time doing. We're talking about doing client check-ins, onboarding clients and setting them up on their plans. And the general correspondence that goes into coaching actual clients. For most coaches, you're still gonna wanna be doing this aspect of the coaching, but there will be a limit to how much you can do. And over here, we have posting social media content and responding to comments, updating things on your website, and corresponding with client inquiries. These are all things that don't have to do with finding clients and coaching clients and can be done by someone else. And the quicker you can get to identifying what these things are and starting to outsource them to some administrative help, the more you'll free up time to do everything else and grow your business. What is super helpful in this regard is starting to take an inventory and identify what all of these tasks are and starting to create some standard operating procedures around how to do them. We call these SOPs and they clearly outline what someone needs to do and the responsibility to do it so that everything gets done under your vision. That way someone else can can step in and do the job regardless of who it is and what skills they have because it's clearly outlined. So start identifying what these tasks are and create some processes around how to get them done. You could do these themselves or an even smarter way to do it is find the admin help, which we're gonna talk about in a second, and get them to create the SOPs. Okay, but where do you find these people to fulfill these tasks? One of the smartest things you can do is hire from your local community, someone that wants a remote or flexible job and get them involved in your business. Start with small tasks and create a trial period. Give them three months worth of work and check in on how it's going. That way you can get to assess if the entire setup is a good fit for both parties. Chances are some good admin help is right under your nose or you just need to put yourself out there like you're looking for that type of help and someone will reach out. This is someone's dream job or dream opportunity. You just got to give them the opportunity to take that next step. If no one like that comes to mind, you could also use online resources like Fiverr or Upwork or even LinkedIn to create a job posting and get some applicants that way. And if you've 
already created some buzz around your coaching and you have some momentum, people are already reaching out to you about these things anyway, especially content creation, which we'll talk about in a second. But in that scenario, ask them for some references to see some of their work and do the same thing around creating a trial period to see if it's a good fit. You should get used to and comfortable trying these things out. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. You can go your separate ways, especially when you have a predefined period where you'll try it. And min help is one of the most important things you can do to build out your business. So I hope this first part was helpful. Next up, we have number two, help with content creation. You probably didn't get into coaching to become a content creator, but the online coaching landscape that we have means that you have to be doing this stuff. It's almost required. In most cases, there's no way of getting around it. Now that doesn't mean you need to become an expert video editor either. I hope this doesn't ruin the illusion for you, but the video you're watching right now, I didn't edit it. I generally send over raw unedited video files with a script for my editor to follow along. And that's how I can create three YouTube videos a week in a short almost every day. And that's because I'm leveraging someone else's help, someone that is better at a skill like video editing than I would ever be. Now, if anyone's actually interested in this video editing process, especially around YouTube, let me know in the comments below, leave the comment video. And if there's enough interest, I can actually create a resource around this process. Now, although so much of the content being created right now is video, you can also get a graphic designer to help you with still posts. Or if you already have quite a few templates on something like Canva, you can get your admin help to swap out some of the text and some of the ideas under your vision. And that's the most important thing here is that regardless if you're getting someone to help you out with your content, you should still be doing the talking and the writing and the actual supplying the ideas around this content. Because truth be told, you've gotten to this point because you understand what your potential clients and what your current clients want. And that needs to come from you and not someone else. Now, one investment that's also super helpful is getting some professional photo help. We're talking photo shoots and brand shoots. You can never have enough images and videos of yourself. One quick heads up I would give around that process is if you're gonna get a brand shoot, make sure you get the photographer to give you a bunch of wide images. You're gonna need these for banner images on websites and sales pages, and you can never have enough of them. In most scenarios, these skills we're talking about, it's always good to find a specialist to do them for you because they're gonna create a better product Product, it's gonna get a better return on your investment and you're gonna waste a lot less time doing it. So once you move north of that $5,000, $10,000 per month income level, you need to start investing some of that money to save you time. Okay, so so far we've talked about admin help and content creation, but this isn't the only way to get help for your coaching business in order to make it grow. We also have number three, support coaches. Okay, so at a certain point, once there's enough interest in your coaching, you'll realize that you can only take on so many clients. If you've hung around on my channel long enough, you know there was a time and place where I took on 100 plus nutrition clients. It was crazy and I had 10 to 15 check-ins every day of the week, seven days of the week. What I would do differently now is hire out some of those support coaches earlier. What tends to happen is you find another nutrition coach to work under you. And the industry standard is typically to do some sort of revenue split for trial period around 50% going to the coach, 50% going to the company, and then moving to a different split in favor of the coach through time, 60, 40, or even 70, 30 in some cases. This is a great scenario for a coach that wants to get tons of coaching experience and doesn't really like marketing themselves or getting clients. They just want to do the coaching and they want to get a paycheck doing it and they're good at coaching. This is the type of person you want to find. In most cases, it's ideal to find a coach with a similar philosophy as you. If you use a tracking based approach, you want to find someone that coaches in a similar way. But you could also be successful finding a coach that is a bit more habit based or intuitive eating based to fill the gaps that you don't have in your business. This is one of the toughest things to wrap my head around in my own coaching business was offloading the coaching to someone else because I really thought that I needed to do it. I believe that people were coming to me to work with me, which is true in some cases, but when you want to grow your business, you need to find the right people to work with you. And this may be hard to believe, but there's someone out there that can coach better than you. You're never going to discover that unless you give them the opportunity. Now, one note about actually transitioning clients to these coaches is you really want to nail that handoff process so that when that client actually applies for your coaching, you have a process in place to introduce them to the coach that they'll be working with. You can do this in a few ways. The client can apply for coaching through a general form. And then based on their situation, you could put them with the support or the assistant coach that would be the best fit. What works best in the situation is if you can point out what about their situation or the result they want would make them a really good fit to work with that assistant coach and then hand them off with that information in a warm introduction. If you wanna own a coaching business that's going to make multi six figures per year, you're 
going to have to go through this path because you're only gonna have so much time to coach clients. And the easiest way to double your workload or your client capacity is to bring someone on that'll do the coaching for you. These are really tough decisions though. This is why this next part of your team, number four mentorship can make the entire process easier. Okay, so many people might not view mentorship or having a business coach or a mentor as a traditional part of their coaching team, but I do. The easiest way to go to a place that you've never been is find someone that's been exactly where you are and get their advice, get their help. This is where mentorship can be so helpful because you get to be the client again. You don't have to call any of the shots. You get the game plan put in front of you through best advice, and then you just execute. By hiring a mentor and having them part of your team, you get an objective set of eyes around this process, and the advice is invaluable. When you are running a business, you realize that you can't waste any time. Time is the most important commodity here and you need to execute fast. Having a clear game plan and just taking the action steps is the easiest way to get there. And I know this firsthand because I resisted this process for too long. For the first five or six years of my nutrition coaching business, I truly believed that I had to do everything myself. It was almost like a badge of honor and it without a doubt set me back. But once I finally did take the leap to invest in a mentor, I realized how simple it made things. It was not easy, but it was much more simple. Investing in yourself can be a very scary process, but it forces you to level up. The best way to get this process started in your own business is to get on some calls with coaches that have been exactly where you are. Pick their brain, ask them to troubleshoot around some of the biggest problems you have in your business currently, and see if you like what you hear. People want to share what they know, and chances are they have an opportunity for you to take the next step. Okay, so the last area where you can outsource here is number five, all of the above. One of the biggest benefits of having a mentor like I just talked talked about is identifying some of the bottlenecks in your business or areas for opportunity, as well as things that you flat out dislike. When you can identify these things, it makes it much easier to get help with. At the end of the Dr. Mark method, we send every student a certificate. For the longest time, I had been printing those out on nice paper, and with it, I would write a handwritten note. I would then send it out through general mail, and for the most part, students liked it. It was a really nice touch, but what I haven't told you yet is that I dreaded doing it. For whatever reason, I like doing nice things. I thought it was a good idea, and I liked that personal touch, but since I didn't enjoy doing them, it would take me two times, three times, as long as it should have done to get them out. So that was one of the first things that I identified for my admin help to help me out with. Now we have an automated process in place to issue certificates. I don't have to do any of it and it gets done automatically no matter what. Maybe it's not ideal and we lose that personal touch, but it does get done and it gets done on time. And good and done is always better than perfect and not done. There's gonna be tons of things like that in your own business, like updating your website or bookkeeping. The less sexy stuff that you end up not doing or dread doing, you need to outsource. Now I've said this throughout this video, the one thing that I wouldn't outsource though is the process of getting leads or new clients for your business. This is one of the most highest revenue generating tasks in your business. And personally, I would not outsource it to anyone else. And if you do, make sure that it is a vetted professional that knows your business inside and out. And that's it, folks. If you want to grow your business, at some point, you're gonna need some help. And I hope this video showed you some steps to grow your team. Now, as great as all those tips are, if you're really serious about starting and growing a nutrition coaching business, the next thing I'm gonna have you do, check out this video I've linked up right here. Next up, let me show you what a nutrition coach making six figures a year does in a day. So make sure to check it out now and I'll see you in the next video.